Hi, I'm Alexandra and I'm Evan and we are within hiking distance. We were on an epic 18 month road trip visiting 22 national parks and going through 11 states. Um, we drove almost 29,000 miles and from all these national parks we visited we thought that a couple of them were completely underrated so we're going to talk to you today about the five national parks we think are underrated in the West. In no particular order, we're going to talk to you about Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona, Capitol Reef National Park in Utah, Lassen National Park in California, Redwood National and State, pa State Parks in California, and finally Olympic National Park in Washington State. The first park we're going to talk about is Petrified Forest National Park. It's located in the eastern part of Arizona off of I-40 and it's between Flagstaff and New Mexico. It has, uh, it's close to the Painted Desert and you can see some amazing badlands around there so it's pretty cool to check out. Um, it has one of the largest concentrations of petrified wood in the world and the trees date between 211 million years and 218 million years ago. And they were covered by volcanic ash and over time the woods uh, organically became petrified and, and replaced by quartz and uh, other minerals. So one particular uh, particularity of this national park is that there is no campground and uh, overnight parking is not allowed. So you're going to have to stay outside of the national park. However, if you want to camp, you can actually do uh, backcountry camping. Uh, you need a free permit for that, which you can get at the visitor center in the national park. So why we think it's underrated and why we love it? Well, first, I mean, the history is absolutely amazing. Uh, imagine, I mean, the petrified forest existed already when the dinosaurs roamed the planet. It's absolutely, you know, mind-blowing to me that it was already existing back then. Um, and if you love rocks, it, you're not going to be disappointed. I mean, petrified wood is absolutely fascinating. And there are so many types of them, the different colors of quartz, and some of them look like they were just chopped off a tree. I mean, it's just really fascinating how um, the different colors, the different types, and how heavy it is as well. It doesn't really look like it's heavy, but it really is. It weighs about 200 pounds. Um, per cubic foot so it's actually really heavy and it's also hard to carve so I think on the scale like diamond is 10 in strength and petrified wood is close to 8 so it's just the whole thing is <laughs> just completely cool and um, we um, you can find so you can find pieces of petrified wood but you can also see some logs uh, none of them are standing, they're all laying down, but they are just, some of them are really, really long, uh, 10 feet long. So it looks like someone just cut that tree and it fell down and it's there, except that it's, it's oh, yeah. petrified. <laughs> yeah, I think there's yeah, some definitely big ones over 10 foot in the parks, so, but they're all laying down and sometimes broken, but they're pretty impressive and uh, pretty big. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's important to know that it is illegal to pick up anything, just like in any national park, but even more in this national park, just because of, um, of how uh, unique it is with all this petrified wood. So this national park is actually open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and closes at 5 p.m. Everybody's required to leave the park by that time. Um, and that's just the winter? Right that's, that's in winter, yes. Uh, it's open in the summer as well, though I'm not sure what, what are the uh, times, until what time it's open in the summer, probably later. Um, but if you want to buy petrified wood... Yeah, there's opportunity to buy petrified wood around the park, so um, there's plenty of shops, but one place that has um, the unpolished petrified wood where they can you can dig it out of the ground, or at least see piles of it in the ground, is um, at Dobell uh, Curios. So it's a up. private uh, property uh, southwest of Petrified Forest National Park. Yep, and uh, so the so what you would do, you would you know check up check it out the the phone number online. You go to the location, and you can call the person who owns that uh, area, and they'll bring you up in their truck. You just follow them. There'll be a parking lot. 
up the road and you park there and then there'll be tons of uh, petrified wood that they have dug out over time uh, along their property where you can go and sift through and make your own pile of petrified wood and it's uh, you know a lot cheaper than if you bought it in the store you know it's unpolished so if you want to polish it up you'd have to do that yourself but it's just pretty cool seeing the, the unpolished wood and Alexander has an example here Yes, so this is, we got a couple of pieces, <laughs> a little more than a couple, but um, these are a couple of pieces and this, on this one you can actually see the bark of the tree, which is really, really cool. And then inside it's crystallized, you can see the different colors of quartz, uh, blue, red, uh, black. So it's really, it's a really fun thing to do and it's perfectly legal because it's outside of the national park. And if you want to buy, you know, if you just want to go there and buy a little souvenir, you can also buy some at the shop inside Petrified National Park and all the petrified wood sold there is um, bought from outside, companies outside the National Park. None of it is petrified wood from the park. Yep, so it's, a, it's pretty fun. So you make your pile and then you can always ship it back to your house, uh, you know, the, via the U USPS uh, flat rate shipping we sent quite a quite a few pounds <laughs> back up to where we live yeah. so uh yeah so definitely worthwhile to you know check it out mm -hmm. um other great things about petrified forest national park is that there used to be some ancestral publins that lived there about 700 years ago so you are able to see some of those old structures um or ruins um in the park it's a great park if uh, you have a few hours and you want to drive through it, stopping at the overlooks. There's plenty of overlooks along the painted mm -hmm. desert side and a few uh, in the park itself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's many short marked hikes, longer unmarked hikes in the trail and also backcountry opportunities for hiking. So unlike most national parks, people uh, where people stay on the trails and you can't go outside of them, Petrified Forest National Park, I think, is one of the only ones where you can go anywhere uh, in the park. So, or practically anywhere. You're just able, you know, pull off on the side of the road and, you know, make your own trail and head on out. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Because it's re it really is a, is a big national park, actually. I mean, if you want to go, you can really go explore and have fun. And so that's definitely need to. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we did both um, marked hikes and a couple unmarked hikes um, and all were pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about this in a minute. And uh, it's also a pet friendly uh, national park so uh, you have to keep your pets on leash um, and on, they can go on any paved trail which is pretty nice because you can actually go and see petrified wood with your with your furry friend uh, and um, you have to clean up after your pet of course but this is one of the most uh, pet friendly national park that we've visited mm -hmm. so when you're ready for hiking head down to the visitor center and pick up uh, petrified forest national park uh, brochure it'll give you a little layout of the park and they also have uh, actually hikes of the of the beaten path hikes. They actually have one pagers they can give you, and it has. This is really the official trails that you can do, just going off your car and doing a little one mile trail. But they are also they have more information, so you can definitely check with the park ranger, and they will be uh, helping you uh, finding the perfect uh, the perfect hike for you. And uh, so. Uh, Starting south of uh, Petrified Forest National Park, right next to uh, the Rainbow Museum, you have the Giant Logs, and uh, it is a, a trail that has a little guidebook. So you can just pick it, pick it up at the beginning of the trail. You can buy it, I think, for for, for a dollar, and it will explain you. It will give you a lot of history about the. Uh, trees and what you're seeing on the way. You can see trees with roots. They can show. They will indicate where there used to be a branch, and you can see it's just really interesting. They give you a lot of information if you've never been there. It's really a great introduction to the petrified forest, and um, 
you can see a lot of big colorful logs including one that is called old faithful which is almost 10 feet long and so it's a it's a it's a fun one and it's a really short uh, hike uh, it's a half mile walk on the paved trail so it's really easy to do uh, another hike that is really nice and where you can also see really long trails that we were talking about uh, is called uh, Long Logs and on a little further on this trail there is also a place called Agate House and they're both on the same trail. So it's a 2.6 mile round trip um, if, you, if you do both location and um, we went first to Agate House which is actually a house made of petrified wood. <laughs> Uh, it's been reconstructed and so apparently ancestors were believed to live there 700 years ago and so it was a home made uh, um, that had eight rooms I believe and it doesn't seem like they lived very long there it's a pretty harsh environment but it's, it's still a really cool thing to uh, to go and check out and then walking back to the parking you can actually stop and go along uh, the long logs and it, there are also gray badlands right there which is really beautiful um, it's, it's really kind of like martian like looking environment what do you think oh yeah yeah it's a uh, pretty cool um, next is a blue mesa trail and that's a one mile loop with blue badlands and it's pretty breathtaking it goes the so you start up at the top for the U parking lot, then you go down into the Badlands, and along the way you'll find petrified wood that looks like exactly like a, you know just a tree been cut, and uh, it's not as uh, um, it's more sparse the petrified wood than in the in other areas of the park, but it's uh, definitely worthwhile doing the hike. Uh, Crystal Forest is another uh, cool trail. It's a paved one mile loop where you can stop and admire thousands of petrified wood pieces of many sizes. It's a great hike for families if you don't have much time and yeah you can see all different colors of the minerals inside the petrified wood. Mm. And lastly, so one trail that we did that we really liked and it's off the beaten path is called Martha's Butte Trail. Mm. It's three and a half miles round trip and it's uh, really fun if you're just looking for a trail where you just want to get out and um, yeah, just walk for a couple miles and see uh, a lot of petrified wood. But there's on this trail, there is you you end up you know at a big mound with a bunch of rocks um, and petroglyphs uh, are on those rocks, and then there's some cool trees around there. So one tree is sticking out of like a big mound where half of it's um, you know covered and half of it's uncovered, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool around there. Yeah, it's really, really a nice hike. We really enjoyed this one, and you'd mm -hmm. have to do a little bit of pathfinding, which makes it fun, you know, if you like hiking and mm -hmm. finding your way out. That was definitely a, a fun one. So this is it for uh, Petrified uh, Forest National Park. The um, second national park uh, we want to uh, talk about is Capitol Reef National Park, and it's in Utah. It's in southern Utah. And it's kind of halfway between Arches National Park and Bryce Canyon National Park. It's remote, so you have to get out of the highway. It's I-70 and you take um, Utah 24 and um, to, to reach it, you're going to pass Goblin Valley State Park, which is a really fun uh, state park to visit. And uh, so actually Capitol Reef, if you're just staying on the main highway, you don't even need uh, federal pass in America the beautiful pass because this is just a passing road for anybody in the area so you don't even actually need a, a federal pass if you stay on the main road and want to get out and visit a little bit around it has a lot of geologic interest uh, because it is right next to the water pocket fold so you're going to have some amazing views uh, around and just the beautiful the rocks is really amazing like the color of it the cathedral style it's really really beautiful and you have the river um the fremont river going by it and um, there's a lot of history with american indians and the fruta historic district uh, where there used to be a mormon settlement um end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th um there is a campground in fruta in the Fruta Historic District 
uh, which is right next to the river so it's really nice because you can see deers and there are or orchards and uh, you can pick trees, uh, trees, you can pick fruits, <laughs> you can pick trees, you can pick fruits there um, depending on the season. When we visited we couldn't, the fruits, it was just not the season but it's, it's just really fun. And it's also about an hour away from Grand Staircase to Calent National Monument which is a really nice place to visit as well. So it's it's fairly located, uh, centrally located, consider that it's pretty remote actually. There's a lot to see around. So we believe it's underrated because it's a little far from the highway, so you really have to plan your way into it. It's not like you're going to travel from Arches National Park to Brace Canyon and you're going to stop on the way. You really have to do a detour for it, so it needs to be really planned. And um, there are other things, including lodging. We actually couldn't find a lot of lodging around. We got a rental and it was kind of ex more expensive. It was definitely more expensive than where we stayed to um, more popular national parks. So that's something that's definitely, I imagine, you know, goes into um, the reason why less people are going there. And there's also not the big supermarket. There's only like one local little market and that's it. So if you ever go there, I would advise to like um, go groceries before and bring it, most of the stuff that you need because they have very limited selection. So just so you can have everything you need. Yep. So we're going to talk about why we love this park. And one of the reasons why is the Alexandra mentioned the rock formations around the park. The whole park is very scenic. Uh, you can, there's a lot of Badlands type features to it and it offers uh, fantastic photo opportunities. You can also, it's also a great cultural site where you can see and everything from petroglyphs all the way up to homesteads, uh, you know, dating back, you know, in the 1900s here. So fairly recent um, history of people being there and then dating all the way back. Uh, the city and the park itself felt pretty laid back since there wasn't a lot of people. Um, you know, it felt yeah pretty relaxed to be there. There wasn't a big rush to to do you know mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And it is a great park for hiking. So this is short hikes all the way through long hikes. And we were just in the fruit area, but I think there's other areas uh, up north and uh, down south. And you know, you had to drive a ways to get there. But just in the fruit area where we stayed, there was a lot of hiking and a lot of great hiking. And we hiked, I think. For 36 miles for a week. Yeah, we were there a week and we hiked 36 miles, so mm -hmm. we're busy. We were staying in Torre, which is the uh, city nearby, the biggest town nearby, I guess, and it's only a 10 minute drive to get to the entrance of, uh, of mm -hmm. Capitol Reef. So it's really an easy drive, and that allowed us to do a lot of hiking uh, during that week. Yep. So we'll talk about some of our favorite hikes while we were there. Uh, number one, Hickman Bridge. It was a moderate 1.9 mile round trip, 400 feet of elevation gain trail. It was, uh, that bridge was pretty amazing. So that's a natural bridge with beautiful views and it was a pretty easy loop. So definitely worthwhile doing that one. Another cool one was Cassidy Arch and that was a moderate uh, 3.9 mile round trip with 670 feet of elevation gain. And the fun history behind this one is that the arch um, was named after Butch Cassidy. So the legend has it that Butch Cassidy and his men hid under the arch um, while they were being, you know, tracked. <laughs> so the trail's rocky, and for most of the time, and when you know, when you come up and see the arch down below, uh, there's a real nice backdrop uh, behind it. It's definitely worth seeing if you have time. Mm -hmm. And for those two hikes, Ickman Bridge and Cassidy Arch, we have videos on this, so we're going to put the description and the, the links in the description below. Uh, another hike that we really enjoyed was Golden Throne, and this one is a strenuous hike. It's 3.6 miles round trip, uh, 730 feet of elevation gain, um, and it's it's just beautiful. You have the hike is scenic the whole way and you have amazing views and they keep changing because it keep you're hiking along the 
um, the rock and then you just reach this huge rock and when it's not sunny you can't really see it but then the sun comes out and yeah it just turns golden <laughs> it's absolutely it's beautiful i really uh, i really like this trail it was a really nice one and another one that we enjoyed a lot was the fremont gorge overlook and that's strenuous five miles round trip almost uh 1100 feet of elevation change and this high just goes up right from the beginning <laughs> and it goes up and up and up and up and the views, you have the views on the other side of the river that are absolutely gorgeous and then when you reach the gorge, it's, it's spectacular. I think we spent like 45 minutes or an hour when we got there because it was just so beautiful that we wanted to take it all in and um, that was... The, so those are our favorite hikes to do there, out of all the hikes we did. So that concludes Capitol Reef National Park. Next we'll talk about Lassen Volcanic National Park in California. So a quick overview on this park is that it is in the northeast of California at the southern tip of the Cascade Mountain Range. It's one of the oldest national parks established in the United States in 1916. And Lassen Peak is one of the largest plug dome volcanoes uh, in the world so a lot of interesting history there and it was la and, uh, last and last and peak last erupted in May 22nd 19 1915 and so scientists are monitoring the right now just uh, check it out you never know when the next erup next eruption is going to happen and there's also an audio tour uh, that matches markers around the 30 miles of the highway inside the park um, so be sure to check that out if you go. So why we think it's underrated and why we love it? Well, it's in a very remote area. The biggest city nearby is Redding in California and it's 47 miles from the park entrance. So just like Capitol Reef, you kind of have to plan to go there. You cannot just be like, I'll be just driving around and check one spot and then go. Um, and it's kind of a mini Yellowstone with all the volcanic activity going on. I mean, you don't have the crazy wildlife. It's more mountainous wildlife that you're not going to see like you, know, you would see in Yellowstone. Um, but it has a big uh, volcanic activity, just like Evan mentioned. It has eight, uh, eight hydrothermal areas, more than 200 lakes dozens of meadows and it has over 150 miles of trail so it's really big and there's a lot of diversity to see on all the trails that you can explore it has breathtaking alpine views and you can still play in the snow in june we visited in snow in june and we were able to do some uh snowball uh snow battles or snowball fights yeah. snowball fights <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, and you can see on the uh, National Park Service website dedicated to uh, Lassen Volcanic National Park, they tell you if there's snow on the trail or on the road. So if you ever plan to visit there, I would recommend you to check out the website first so that you can plan accordingly. Uh, you can find, one thing that we loved about Lassen Volcanic is that you can find a parking spot when you want to go for a hike. It's really easy. I mean, because it's not, as traffic as other national parks, you can just plan to go to a park to for a hike, park at the trailhead, and go and do it. It's no big deal. Um, so that's definitely a big plus. And you can also uh, uh, there's also something called the Rich Higher Trail Challenge. And so you need to hike seven miles for it, and that. So when you go to the visitor center, they will give you a little booklet to fill in and you put in the hikes that you did and the mileage that you did. And then when you go back to the visitor center, they will review it and give you a, a commemorative bandana, which is fun. Uh, it's always nice to have a little encouragement from hiking. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so next we'll discuss some hikes on the trail. Um, one of them is the Manzanita Lake Loop Hike. It's a two mile loop around the lake and you get beautiful views of Lassen Peak and it's an easy hike and you know, it's fun. Uh, the next one is King Creek Falls, which is a two mile round trip trail. 
it's an easy trail and you know you follow a stream and um, yeah that was a nice one too yeah um, you can see the falls really close by mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're just right next to the falls going up on the right hand side of it so they kind of cascade down so mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty nice um, Ridge Lakes Trail is also a popular one with 2.4 miles. Uh, one of our favorites is the Cinder Cone Trail. So, um, still part of Lassen Volcanic National Park, but you kind of got to drive outside it um, to get to it. So that's 4.4 4 miles round trip, and uh, it has fantastic views. It's pretty amazing. We have a video on that, and there was major eruptions in 1650. So this. You know, the the hike, it starts off easy, uh, just walking through some lava beds, and then it becomes moderate before turning strenuous as you go up the mountain or up the volcano. Um, so we really enjoyed this one. Going down the volcano is a lot of fun. You just run down, and, yeah, you'll get there, like, super fast rather than the, the slow slog up. Um, so we really enjoyed this one. Definitely, yeah, that's one of our favorites if you go. Yeah, and the landscape around it, once you're on the volcano and you look at the landscape around it, it's just, you can see the, I mean, it's still marked from the eruption, you know, so there's actually a lake that partly, that partly disappeared because of it. So it's just really fun when you're on top of the volcano to be able to witness that. And it's yeah, just, you yeah. get great views of um, painted dunes around the volcano oh, yes. and also Lassen Peak, you can see pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's great. Another one, uh, one that we wanted to do and we didn't get to do it because it was closed, but we definitely would uh, do it. And it's called Bumpas Hell Trail and uh, it has a lot of volcanic features. So you actually walk along some bubbling mud and there are some uh, sulfur steam going out and all this kind of stuff. And so this is, um, and I read that it just reopened. So if you ever go, I, uh, yeah, we would definitely recommend to do that, even though we've never done it, because we would want to do it. Mm -hmm. it um, yeah, I think, yeah, the, otherwise the only other place where you can see the bubbling mud is just off the side of the mm -hmm. road. Um, and I forgot the name of the trail, but it's just right there on the left, and there's a park, big parking lot uh, mm -hmm. right there. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely the Bumpus Health Trail would be something that we would do if it was open. Yes. Um, one trail that uh, we enjoyed as a family was the devastated area. And so it's an it's a interpretive trail and they have a lot of information about the eruption of Lesson Peak. So they actually have some photos because it was uh, wildly, uh, widely documented back then when it happened. And that's actually how Lesson Volcanic became this national park. It's because they just uh, documented this happening and trying to preserve it. Uh, so uh, that was super interesting. It was showing this enormous rock on the trail and that was a rock that was thrown off by the volcano all the way that is pretty far out. So it's just really impressive to see like the uh, consequences and how it looks even just a century after the, uh, the eruption. That was really, really cool one. Um, there's a, it's not really a hike, it's kind of a little walk and it's just outside Lassen Volcanic National Park. It's called Subway Cave and it's free to visit. And you bring your flashlight, you don't need a federal pass or anything to go there. You, there's a small parking and you just go there and it's a quarter of a mile lava tube. It's pitch dark in there, and your phone is not going to help you go through it. You really need a flashlight. Yeah, it's it's totally dark, and it's I think it's 47, 48 degrees in there, something mm -hmm. like that. So it gets a little cool, but because it's short, and it's okay. Take a sweater, take a flashlight, and go explore that because that was really, really mm -hmm. fun and worth uh, doing. So that was our take on the Lesson Volcanic National Park. The fourth national park that we'll be reviewing is the Redwood National and State Parks in California. So a quick review on this one is that it's in Northern California, uh, close to Oregon, and it's composed of national of uh, Redwood Na National Park three and three state parks, which were created in 1920s to save the redwood trees. 
So the other state parks there were Prairie Creek, uh, Del Norte Coast, and Jedediah Smith Redwoods. So the redwood trees are the tallest living or organisms on earth. So we love this national park because first of all, it's free. It's completely free. Both um, the, the national park and the state parks. So you can go to any of them. They actually have, each of them have their own maps of hiking trails and things you can see and do. So if you just want to go to the Smith Redwoods State Park, they will give you a map and they will tell you what hikes you can do around and uh, you're not going to need a federal pass for any of this. Um, some trails are open to pets on leash, which is nice. Uh, nice things for people who are traveling with their uh, furry friends and uh, it's one thing we really loved about the national and state parks was the diversity of it you have you have the coast the prairies the rivers the old growth um, it has wildlife uh, elks and it's just really interesting you know you can just hit all those different places that are not too far from each other and actually see a lot of different uh, environment and uh, ecosystems. And uh, each of the, nation, uh, the national park and each state park have their own junior ranger program. So you can have actually four patches or <laughs> different things if you go to, if you hit them all. And um, they're, um, they're, they're always fun to, to do. Um, and one, one thing that our son enjoyed the most was the banana slugs. <laughs> there are lots of banana slugs that one of the things it's, it's famous for. And so the fun on the trail was to look for banana slugs and we would, when we would find one, we'd have to stop for 10 minutes to watch it move very slowly <laughs> from point A to point B. But that was uh, definitely something that got him very excited and us too. I mean, I, mean, I liked it. It was just fun to watch. And they, um, there's also a lot of uh, trails for different levels. So if you go with the whole family, you're still going to have a good time. And if you want to do pure hiking, there are also a couple of trails that are really good and uh, strenuous and that we're going to show you um, some beautiful old growth uh, trees. Yep. So definitely when you go visit, go to the visitor center and pick up some brochures on each of the parks and also the main park uh, there. So that would, that will give you a good idea of the overview of what parks, of what trails to do in the park. Uh, one of our favorites was called Trillium Falls Trail. It's a two mile round trip trail. It goes through some old growth forest and also the Trillium Falls is a pretty nice waterfall. We took some good uh, uh, photos there. Uh, the next one is the Tall Trees Trail, which is 4.2 miles round trip. Uh, this one was real nice. It was up in the mountains uh, from what I remember. And I think one of the, I think the biggest redwood uh, tree is around that area as well. So it's unmarked, but um, mm -hmm. there's a ton of uh, very big trees in that area. And that's actually a hike you cannot do, just do like that. There's a code to drive on this. Well, you need uh, a permit. And you yeah, just you need a permit. Uh, it's free and you just get it at the visitor center. Do you need the federal um, pass for this hike in particular or not? Um, I, don't yeah, I don't remember. But you, you need to ask for a free permit and they deliver it on the day before, um, I believe. Mm -hmm. And because you need a, a code to access the road, that it's going to bring you to the hike. But that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of my favorites there. Yeah. It was really real cool. amazing. Another trail is Cathedral Trees Trail with three miles round trip. It's a windy trail next to the visitor center. And we really enjoyed that one as well. So that concludes um, our overview of Redwood National and State Parks. And finally, uh, so the fifth national park we think is underrated in the West is Olympic National Park in Washington State. It's located in the Northwest of the state. And so from Olympia, you take uh, uh, Interstate 5 and then you go on Highway 101. It's about 100 miles from Seattle. 
and um, so it has an amazing uh, diversity and it's famous for its rainforest it's one of the largest temperate rainforests in the US so this is the map you can grab uh, the visitor center there are a couple of visitor centers there uh, because there are different areas as we're going to mention uh, a little later mm -hmm. so the next section is why Olympic National Park might be underrated so there's a lot of driving in between the different areas of the park. Everything's pretty spread out, um, but it has great diversity in going to the coast, going to the rainforest, and going up into the mountains. Mm -hmm. And you can go boating, you can go fishing, backpacking, hiking. Tide, there are tide pools on the coast. So it's really a great place to go for families. Our son really enjoyed it, and you just can find all kinds of trails and any size with anything, waterfalls, you name it. It really, it, it practically has everything over there. Um, you can also see some salmon. Uh, uh, you can also see salmon in spring and late summer. Hmm. We tried to go and see them. We visited in, it was early August and it wasn't, they were not out there yet, but you can actually apparently see them jumping out of the river. Hmm. And <laughs> it would be really cool to see. Yeah. Um, so and it, we like I said we visited in August and it was a little busy on the trails but it wasn't too busy either, so there was definitely a plus side for us to be able to park somewhere, go hike and then leave mm -hmm. and that was it. It was definitely a little more busy than other parks we mentioned earlier, but that was also during the summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So it gets a lot of rain, so that's why we visited during the summer because. It's one of those, you know, they have a rainforest there, so <laughs> you get a lot of rain over there. And also the thing is when we visited in August, uh, it was there were some forest fires around, so we went actually hike on the mountains, hmm. uh, but the view was hazy. You're supposed to be able to see Canada, and uh, we, we couldn't see as well as we probably would without the forest fires, uh, but I, I bet this summer was really nice. So the hikes that we did over there and that we really enjoyed, uh, Mary Mare Falls Trail, it's two miles round trip and it's fairly easy, it's pretty traffic, um, a lot of people go there and it's, it's beautiful, it's really nice, you can, it's an easy trail and our son really enjoyed doing this one, um, that's, that was definitely a popular hike in the park. Another one that we did that's also popular is uh, Moss's Trail and it's in the whole rainforest. So it's right behind the visitor center in the rainforest and that was really fun. I mean the whole area feels completely different from anywhere else in the park and um, the trail is short but really really fun to explore and a lot to see. It was, that was a great trail. I really enjoyed this one. Another good trail is called the Hurricane Hill Trail. So this one you go uh, past one of the visitor centers up into the mountains. Um, we had a tough time with parking, but we eventually found mm -hmm. something up there. But it's a great trail. It take, you go on top of a, you know, one of the mountains there and you have a great surrounding view of the area. Uh, another trail is Hole in the Wall Trail on Rialto Beach. It's a 4.3 mile round trip trail. And this one was real nice. It was really cloudy and overcast this day uh, with a lot of uh, mist uh, from the water. But just seeing that hole in the wall was pretty cool and definitely worthwhile. And you see all sorts of different rocks on the beach and that was real interesting to see the different types of uh, rocks there. There were tide pools too. Little tide pools yep. under the rock. Yep. Oh, that's cute. So you see anemones. And, yep. uh... Right by hole in the wall there's a bunch of the tide was out, so we saw a bunch of uh, tide pools there. Mm. And just the walk on the beach is great. I mean, every beach there is kind of different, so it's really uh, it was it was really nice. There were a lot of rocks on that bridge on the beach. Mm. If you remember, it was mm. fun. Yep. So, so the last one is Soul Duck Falls Trail. You get a great view of some waterfalls on that trail. So you go over a bridge, and then I think you look down into the waterfalls, and those are pretty spectacular. Well, we hope you enjoyed the introduction to those five national parks and to what we think are uh, the most underrated in the West. 
uh, you should definitely, you know, go and check them out. <laughs> yep, they're pretty nice and uh, not some of them aren't very crowded. So definitely worth your time. Yes. And so if you have any comments on those or any questions, let us know in the comments. You know, feel free. We're always happy to share our experience with you. And uh, next week we're going to go live and we will be talking about uh, the health benefits of hiking. And we'll be live on Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye.